In light of the Browns' recent success in the offseason by acquiring generational talent Odell Beckham to play alongside guys like Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Jarvis Landry, Kareem Hunt, Antonio Callaway, and David Njoku, as well as Denzel Ward and Miles Garrett on the defense side of the ball, most fans are giving credit to current general manager of the Browns, John Dorsey. But there was another GM before him, a man by the name of Sashi Brown, who was fired in 2017 after producing just one win in two years. For he chose to forego winning in favor of stockpiling draft picks. Neither men never got to see the fruits of their labor pay off. And in this video, I will be going over the moves that Mr. Sashi Brown made in his tenure and at the end compared to that of Sam Hinky. Now let's jump right in. Sashi's professional career started off for a DC based law firm that regularly oversaw major sports moves. Two of the major moves that the firm he worked at oversaw was one of Jerry Jones acquiring the Cowboys as well as Dan Snyder purchasing the Redskins. He would later take the skill set he developed at work to the Jaguars where he started in 2015 where he worked as lead counsel until 2012. In 2013, he was hired by the Browns, and by January 3rd, 2016, he was Executive Vice President of Football Operations, essentially the general manager. Sashi was fired less than two years later on December 7th, 2017, after going 1-27 in, in two years. But it is most likely what he left behind that will define his legacy with the Browns, and not what he produced during his time there. Let's take a look at the risks Sashi made that ultimately cost him his job, starting with the 2016 NFL draft. The first big move for Sashi came on April 20th between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cleveland Browns when the Browns acquired the 2016 8th overall pick, the 77th overall pick, and a 100th overall pick as well as a 2017 first round pick and a 2018 second round pick in exchange for a 2016 second overall pick and a 2017 fourth round pick. The Eagles would of course go on to choose Carson Wentz with that second overall pick, while the Browns would take the 100th overall pick and trade it to the Oakland Raiders, as well as their 8th overall pick and trade it in exchange for a 176th overall pick, as well as the 15th overall pick and 76th overall pick of that draft. And with the 15th overall pick, they would select wide receiver Corey Coleman. Other notable picks that year included selecting Emmanuel Ogba, 32nd overall, financial wizard Carl Nassib, 65th overall, gunslinger Cody Kessler, 93rd overall, and Joe Schobert, 96th overall. The Browns and new head coach Hugh Jackson really shat the bed this year going 1-15 with their sole win coming on Christmas Eve versus the Chargers. The only two bright spots that year seemingly were of course Joe Thomas' Pro Bowl season yet again for the Browns as well as newly converted wide receiver Terrell Pryor really becoming an offensive weapon. The backlash and embarrassment, however, for Cleveland was severe. Despite having the first overall pick in the next year's draft, that 2017 draft, there really didn't seem to be light at the end of the tunnel for this team. RG3 was placed on injured reserve for the very first game of the 2016 season, and Cody Kessler was not much to write home about. Now let's take a look at the 2017 NFL draft. Of course, being the worst overall team, the Browns got the first overall pick and decided to go with defensive end Miles Garrett, who has really turned out to be everything the Browns hoped for. I mean, this was just a great pick. Sort of an obvious pick as a consensus number one overall, but a great pick nonetheless. This was a pick that didn't miss for Sashi. The 12th overall pick, which the Browns got the previous year in the Philadelphia trade, was then turned around and traded to Houston in exchange for their 25th overall pick and a 2018 first round pick. Of course the Texans would turn around and draft Deshaun Watson with that pick while the Browns made other notable picks in that draft including drafting Jabril Peppers 25th overall, Deshaun Kaiser the quarterback 52nd overall, and Larry Ojanobi with the 65th overall pick. The offseason ended with Joe Hayden being released by the team of course, Terrell Pryor was not re-signed in favor of Kenny Britt, and the season ended with zero wins. That's right, zero wins, they didn't win one goddamn game the whole year. Had several close games, but ultimately didn't win one. The few bright spots the Browns did have that year was the brief return of Josh Gordon, Joe Sherbert making the Pro Bowl, 
Miles Garrett playing up to his potential, and Hugh Jackson jumping into Lake Erie, fulfilling his promise that he would jump in if the team did the same or worse than a 1-15 record. So he jumped in in honor of charity, and to the dismay of Browns fans everywhere, he resurfaced. Many thought it wasn't even possible to make the Browns a bigger laughing stock than they already were around the league, but that somehow became a reality, with the zero wins being only the second team ever in NFL history to do it, and of course the A.J. McCarron trade fiasco with the Bengals. The Browns reportedly were too busy celebrating to actually submit the trade as a finalized trade into the league, and thus it was never completed. So basically they were celebrating something they thought would happen but didn't due to their own negligence. That PR nightmare mixed in with one win in two years was more than enough for the Browns to handle and ultimately they fired Sashi Brown on December 7th, 2017. Hugh Jackson somehow kept his job a little while longer but Sashi was fired. Former player and general manager John Dorsey was hired just one day later to replace Sashi. That offseason in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Browns would select Baker Mayfield first overall, Denzel Ward fourth overall, while other notable picks include Nick Chubb being picked 35th overall and Antonio Callaway being picked in the fourth round. The Browns also acquired Jarvis Landry via a trade that offseason, and there was finally, finally hope on the horizon for the Cleveland Browns. They went 7-8-1 that year, had four Pro Bowlers, two second team All-Pros, and potentially the biggest move they made was firing Hugh Jackson after Week 8. Sure, they didn't make playoffs, but arguably they could have if they had a better kicker and a better coach earlier on in the year. But they are well positioned for the future, especially with the moves that John Dorsey has made in this offseason. Of course, there were the two trades that the Giants made with the Browns, sending Odell Beckham and Olivier Vernon to Cleveland in exchange for Kevin Zeitler, Jabril Peppers, a first round pick, and a third round pick, which eventually came one giant deal. And of course, signing Sheldon Richardson in the offseason, making their opposing D-line very, very scary to any quarterback. And now comes the question, well, how much credit does Sashi Brown actually deserve for this Browns rebuild? Of course, they haven't won anything yet, but if it does, how much credit does Mr. Brown deserve? And ultimately, I think he deserves more credit, probably a little bit more than he's getting but no more than 20 to 15 percent and I'll tell you why. Ultimately, Sashi Brown wasn't the best judger of talent. We see that with drafting Corey Coleman 15th overall in the 2016 draft. He's no longer on the team, never really was a solid player. Choosing to sign Kenny Britt over Terrell Pryor turned out to be a disastrous move for Sashi Brown. Passing up on quarterbacks like Deshaun Watson as well as Carson Wentz, favoring to go with a guy like Deshaun Kaiser was just a terrible overall move for them. And of course, letting Joe Hayden go. When it comes to Sashi Brown, his legacy, of course, won't be defined by the prospects and the players he produced. If you look at the current roster, I really only give him credit for four players that will contribute to the Browns in the near future. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba, who is now looking to be traded now that the Browns have Olivier Vernon. Larry Ogunjobi, who definitely contributes to that scary defensive line. Miles Garrett, who speaks for himself, but that may have been more of a slam dunk than anything The consensus number one. And of course, Joe Schobert, the pro bowler. But everyone else pretty much came before or after Sashi, so he doesn't get credit for him. What Sashi can ultimately hang his hat on is producing enough picks for the 2018 NFL Draft. He set it up and Dorsey knocked it down, essentially. And he did at least position the Cleveland Browns so that they would have the first overall pick which they of course selected Baker Mayfield. Now comparing him to Sam Hinkie, there are obvious similarities there, you know, both stockpiled picks. Luckily for the Browns, the guy waiting after Sashi's tenure ended was John Dorsey. And unluckily for the Sixers, the guy waiting at the end of Sam Hinkie's tenure was a noted war criminal, Brian Colangelo, who really fucked up everything along the way. Now the main difference between Sashi and Sam is that Sam was a much better judge of talent. He had a much better eye for talent. Getting guys like Dario Saric, Robert Covington, Embiid, ultimately setting up the Sixers to get Ben Simmons, getting TJ McConnell. Sure, he had a lot of misses along the way, like Julia Oak for MCW, but ultimately not as bad as Sashi. And in basketball, when there's only five guys on the court, as opposed to football, where there's 11 guys on both sides of the ball, you can afford to have a few misses, and the NFL picks are much more important. Sashi missed on a lot. 
and left a lot of gaping holes in the Browns for a few years. But both did position future general managers to roll with what they acquired. Sashi more so the 2018 draft and the Odell Beckham trade. That was more of John Dorsey capitalizing on the current I don't even know what to call it, what's going on in New York with the Giants organization, but he capitalized on whatever that was. And of course with the Butler trade, the Jimmy Butler trade was a direct result of Sam Hickey finding Robert Covington and Dario Saric, developing them within the organization, then eventually trading them for superstar Jimmy Butler. So ultimately right now, I think within the Sixers organization, you give Sam Hickey 70% of the credit, Elton Brand 50% of the credit for what's going on right now, and Brian Colangelo and Jerry Colangelo, negative 20% of the credit for what's going on right now. Sashi, I think you give about 15-20% to 20% credit, and the rest is to John Dorsey. But Sashi should always be a footnote when you talk about the Browns' success. If there is, indeed will be success in years to come, I think he should always be noted for the 2018 NFL Draft for stockpiling those picks so that John Dorsey could capitalize on future generations of NFL players. And for that, he should always be noted. Air Baby D, play us off. He hit cause you boy most hated coming soon. Hate so much, most hated but for tour. I just signed with Nike, so that's sex over sex. Hey, tryna make some F, that's a whole lot of O's. Hey, I can 